Okay, here we are with question eight from the 2020 VCAR chemistry exam, and it looks like we're looking at spectroscopy. Uh, we've got an unknown organic compound with this formula. Um, notice the fact that it's a C4H8, therefore there is one um, double bond present. It's a non-cyclic compound, as it contains a double bond. All right, so we already know that, um, so we can ignore that. So therefore we've got a double bond. Um, the infrared spectrum is shown below. Looking at this here, I can see that there's no O to H. Um, however, here there could be a C double bond to O. It's not a very large peak here, but it definitely could be there anyway. What does the region of this indicate about the bonds within that? All right, so already I've answered this question because I've indicated that there's no O to H here. So therefore is the no O to H um, present? in the molecule as there is no clear peak um, in this region. Um, I could also then talk about one, there actually is no peaks there at all. Um, I was wondering whether I need to talk about these sharp peaks here being C to H's, but there's nothing of that in there at all. So let's ignore that. Moving on to part B. The C um, NMR spectrum has four distinct peaks, so therefore we have must have no symmetry at all. There's a number of peaks. Each of these carbons are unique, so therefore what could the structural formula be? Um, we could have four in a row. We probably have a C double bond to O, so therefore it could be this. could be the aldehyde. Or, um, again, putting all these ducks in a row, um, you could also have the ketone. So if I do that, we could also have this as a particular structural isomer um, because all our carbons are unique and we have a double bond to oxygen present here, which I think that is. I'm not 100% sure, but um, let's just say it is for now anyway. Let's move on. Okay, Koki, um, next question is... This is our high resolution um, NMR. That's what we've got. So therefore we've got a chemical shift here, relative peak area there. I'm gonna write three H's on it. And I'm gonna write the next one is three H and this one is two H and we'll move on. So therefore there's three um, environments within our molecule. Identi refer to the HNMR spectrum and provide three pieces of information about the known unknown compound and indicate how each would assist. So here we have our spectrum. The first thing I can say, it has three peaks, which equals three unique H environments. 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 Anyway, so that's the first thing there. Um, the hydrogen ratio is um, two to three to three um, in each environment, environment. So therefore we have a CH2, a CH3 and a CH3 um, due to the um, peak area provided. So therefore, again, knowing how many hydrogens are in each environment, chances are this is a CH2, CH3, CH3. Um, because of that relative peak area, that tells us how many hydrogens are in the environment. Um, and then uh, let's go into a bit more detail and let's go with our chemical shifts. So the chemical shifts. Chemical shifts. So let's talk about chemical shifts and let's go to our data booklet. And again, my data booklet is all over the shop down here. But let's find the first basic chemical shift um, of this one. And I'll say the fact that we've got this guy here at 1.8. 1.8 here is looking at, perhaps it's probably just a CH, it could be next to a double bond. This one's pretty close to this one as well. So therefore it sits in here with a ester or an amine, but it's not gonna be that one. I think it contains a double bond. So therefore I'm gonna change my thing here. Could be, no, double bond. I reckon it's gonna be this guy here. I reckon we're gonna say in this response here, chemical shift of 
0.82 refers to the fact that it is a R CH double bonded to a CH double bonded to the CH3 um, and that is the proton from this one here. So therefore the chemical shifts of that suggest this is present in our molecule or the molecule I probably should have written but anyway. Okay so therefore I've got that guy there. What can I then do with my next thing? Yeah, that's the end. That's the end of the question. Alrighty, cool, cool. So therefore, that is um, that's it. Question answered, done. Um, let's go back and have a look at it just to make sure. Um, we've spoken about how many environments we have. We've spoken about the hydrogen ratio and what the each um, probably the, what each carbon is going to have on it, so how many hydrogens attached to each carbon there. And so that's good. There we've talked about our OHs, our infrared spectrum, seven marks, two marks there, three marks there, and the other one, yep, is two marks here. Our potential structures for our compound are there as well. I'm gonna change, actually, I'm gonna go back here. Because it doesn't look like I have got a double bond to oxygen present, even though that is there, I've talked about it before, this peak here doesn't look distinctively like my carbon to oxygen double bond. It probably should be a bit deeper down there. I'm gonna see if I can find out another particular potential thing with this, um, Structure, carbon to carbon, let's say we have a double bond present in there. If I have an oxygen there and a carbon to carbon, what is that going to give us? I'm going to have two hydrogens here, a single hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here. That's not my compound because I've got four um, individual things happening there. Let's have a look at what else I could have. I've got a carbon to carbon to carbon to oxygen to carbon three here two here two here and one here that fits the bill but it still doesn't tell me i've got my oxygen's not there uh what else could i have i could have a carbon to carbon to carbon there is that going to work for me i'm not too sure anyway i don't know what this compound actually is um these ones here fit this here fits closest to my um, my NMR spectrum. However, I'm not 100% sure on that chemical shift. Let me just have another look at my chemical shifts. And I'll look at this again. Is there anything else I can tell from these chemical shifts? All right, 1.8. Let's go with 3.5 and 3.85. 3.5 could be an OH. We know we haven't got an OH. Looks like these guys sit here with a single bond to oxygen. All right, so single bond to oxygen is looking pretty good for me. But what could my molecule actually look like? That is a great question. Um, all right, let's have another look. So I reckon it's got a single bond to oxygen in it. Let's start playing around again and say we have a carbon to carbon, that to carbon, and let's have a look at what else I can do. Let's go with O here to carbon here. I've got three hydrogens here. I've got three hydrogens here. I've got two hydrogens here. I reckon this is gonna fit it. I reckon this one here is my molecule. I reckon this guy here, is my molecule just because I like to know exactly what it actually is because I've got one two three four carbons they're all unique I've got a double bond to carbon here um, I've also got three three two yep this guy here is my molecule and that makes me a bit happier about my structural isomers here so which two do I want the people to actually look at what did I know I definitely wanted to look at this one because I think that fits the bill properly I want them to look at this one, and I want them to look at, well, these two are the same. No, these two are different. 
All right, I'm just going to cross out these two because perhaps we don't have that carbon to oxygen because it doesn't kind of fit my um, thing. So therefore this one here might not be a carbon to oxygen. It might be a carbon to carbon double bond or it might be something completely different. But definitely these guys here are my molecules that I'm going to go with because they fit the rest of the spectrums better.